Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Peter Donovan. I'm the director of the Sue and Bill Gross Stem Cell Research Center here at UC Irvine, and it's my pleasure to welcome you. I'm going to start by thanking a lot of people so I don't forget later, and particularly Chris and Lorraine Steele, who really put this whole event together and worked with a lot of different people to make it uh, what I think will be a terrific event. The California Institute of Regenerative Medicine, of course, the st state stem cell funding agency, has played such an important role in our center and many centers throughout the state. And in my opinion, saved stem cell research at a critical point in th that field and a terrific um, testament to the generosity of the people of the state. I'd like to thank my staff, uh, who also have been running around all morning and late last night to get it ready. We had a Cinco de Mayo party here yesterday, so we had to clear up after that first. <laughs> um, I'd like to thank our presenters. It's um, a Saturday morning. Uh, tomorrow's Mother's Day, I believe. And, um, you know, thank you all for taking the time to be here. Uh, we know how much uh, this represents to a lot of people. I'd like to also point out our sponsors. Chris and Lorraine have put posters around uh, uh, naming our sponsors, and I'd like to thank our sponsors, without uh, whom we really couldn't have done some of this. And also all of the volunteers who showed up last night and this morning very early to get the place ready and uh, get us ready to go. Um, I'd like to welcome you to Sue and Bill Gross Hall, a SOM Institute. This uh, building was created in part by major funding from the California Institute of Regenerative Medicine and major funding from the university and from donors in this uh, community, uh, without which we couldn't have built this building. Uh, we expected that this building would be a great place for doing science. One of the things we didn't fully expect is how much it would be a great place for meeting people from the patient community and how much that would mean to them and to us. And I'd like to um, now give you a little primer on stem cells and then hand it over uh, to our next presenter. So you'll see the title of this slide, Stem Cells Will Revolutionize the Treatment of Human Disease. I really believe that and I want to quickly explain to you why that is. Pluripotent stem cells, of which embryonic stem cells are probably the best known, have two incredible properties. One is that they can essentially grow forever in the laboratory, and so you can make massive numbers of them. So you can expand these cells indefinitely over time. But they have another incredible property, and that is that they can turn into every cell type present in the human body skin cells, brain cells, kidney cells, every cell present in our bodies. And those two properties together are really incredible for uh, developing new treatments for human disease. And let me give you a little bit of an analogy. If you think of those stem cells instead of a little ball of pasta dough, which you could expand and expand and expand, and for which you had you know, no exhaustion of that, then you could turn that into a myriad of different types of pasta. So think of it as an inexhaustible, are you all hungry now? <laughs> an inexhaustible source of a raw material from which you can produce specialized products. And in the case of pluripotent stem cells, the uh, the final product is every cell type in our body. And that really um, makes them important cells for, for medicine. And there are three particular aspects of why they're so important. I'll quickly go through those. If you understand that stem cells can turn into specialized cells, that's exactly the process that occurs during the normal development of our own species. And so for the first time now, we have an ability in the laboratory to study the development of our own species and to understand why that sometimes goes wrong. Now, scientists in labs in the past have studied mice and frogs and rats, but we clearly aren't mice, frogs, and rats. So now we have an opportunity to study the disease process in a dish in a laboratory. 
And that gives an insight into the development of disease that we've never had before. If you can make every cell type in the body, that also gives you another opportunity, uh, and that is to use those cells to understand how drugs work. You'll know of many drugs that are pulled off the market because when they came through all the testing and were actually used in humans, then for some population group those drugs weren't very good. But now we have an opportunity to test those drugs in normal human cells. Drug companies currently test drugs in rats or mice or in cancer cells. We have an ability to test those drugs in normal human cells. So this technology now allows us to develop better, safer drugs. And finally, the thing that really has excited the public and the scientific community alike is if you can make specialized cells, you can use those cells to treat a wide variety of diseases by transplanting those cells into an area that's diseased or damaged to replace or nurse the endogenous tissue. So for all these three different reasons, I and many other scientists believe that stem cells will absolutely transform the practice of medicine and revolutionize the treatment of human disease. Many people believe the discovery of these cells was one of the greatest scientific discoveries of the 20th century. So that's why people are so excited about stem cells, and they could impact a lot of us. I'd like to use another analogy about why stem cells could be so important. People ask me a lot, why do we need stem cells if we have drugs and surgery and so on? I feel that our lives, um, which start at birth, really are like getting onto a ship. And the length of the journey, the safety of the journey, depend on a lot of different things. Does the ship have a rudder to steer it out of danger? Does it have a hull? that can withstand the rigors of the ocean? Does it have life vests that, if the ship goes down, can save people? And you can think of those things just like surgical techniques, medicines, or uh, medical devices uh, that keep us safe during our lives. And what stem cell research represents is an attempt to make a lifeboat. Many people might not ever need it. They might be fine with the medicines and the uh, surgeries and so on. But occasionally you might need it. What if your boat is headed towards an iceberg and your rudder can't steer it out of the way? And when it hits the iceberg, the hull isn't quite as good as you thought it was. And when you jump in the water with a life vest, the water's so cold, you've only got minutes to live. Then you need the lifeboat. And for many of my friends in the Huntington's disease community, they know they're headed for that iceberg. There's no chance of them surviving it. And that's why we need to build this lifeboat. Now, many of us will never need it. You think that, but probably Christopher Reeve didn't think he was going to hit a, an iceberg. Michael J. Fox didn't. But for many of us, Evan Henry in the room here, who will talk later, leading perfectly normal lives, and then you hit an iceberg. And that's why it's really simple. That's what stem cell research is all about. So I hope you will go out from here and ad advocate for it, really understand it, and be able to explain it to your friends and colleagues why this is so important.